Hello everyone, welcome back. This is the video for class 4 of Guitar Class 102. Um, this class I want mainly to be a review class for everyone to get caught up with the new strings and the new notes. Uh, we will have a little bit of new material, but not anything too, too difficult. Um, and that's what I'm going to start with today. Um, I may have touched on it a little bit last class, um, but this is on your scales page that I handed out um, during the very first class. And I wanted to take a look at the A chromatic scale on the fifth string and the E chromatic scale on the sixth string. Remember, a chromatic scale is a scale made up of totally of half steps, um, so you're not skipping any notes here. Okay, um, there's a lot of advantages to practicing your chromatic scales on one string. For one thing, it'll help you learn the notes on these two strings, which is very important because all of our bar chords are derived from these two notes. So if you know the notes on the A string and the E string, you increase your chord vocabulary exponentially uh, when we get into bar chords. Um, technical things to worry about. Um, first of all, you're activating every finger, which is excellent All right, to for a warm-up or just a, a single practice session. Um, you work on shifting down the neck, All right, limiting um, the amount of space between you have the notes on the shift um, and your squeak. Something we haven't really talked about too, too much, but um, when I talk about a squeak, I'm talking about your fingers sliding across the windings of the bass strings giving you that sh 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 swishing kind of sound. Um, it's a sound that most people have become very accustomed to as part of the production noise of the guitar, um, but it, it really helps to try and lessen it as much as you can. It can become very distracting uh, for a listener if your squeak is way too loud. Um, so when you shift down the neck while doing the chromatic scales, you want to try to lift your fingers slightly above the string um, to not have that squeak every time you, you move down the neck. Um, it's a fairly hard thing to do, it takes time, but it's one of those things if you just keep thinking about it and keep working on it, um, it, it gets easier and easier and you start sounding better and better. All right. So first off, we have the A, A chromatic scale starting on the fifth string, All right. and it goes just like this. We start in first position with open A, first finger A sharp, B, third finger C, fourth finger C sharp. Now we shift our first finger down to the fifth fret for D on the A string. All right, so you end up here. That's the second dot. I don't know if you can see it, the second dot on this guitar. So then we have first finger D, second finger D sharp, third finger E, fourth finger F. All right, and then we shift to the ninth fret with our first finger to F sharp. F sharp. G sharp, and our fourth finger will end up on the twelfth fret, A, and that's the end of your chromatic scale. Going back down, A, G sharp, G natural, F sharp, we have to shift back. This time we're shifting our fourth finger back to the eighth fret, F. All right, and we'll end up with our first finger over the fifth fret. So F, E, E flat, D, Shift again, fourth finger, C sharp on the fourth fret. And all the way back down to your open A again. Um, there's a million different ways you can practice this. I'd recommend doing it slowly at, four, uh, at first, of course, um, using all downstrokes. Then you may want to try playing each note twice with an up and down stroke so you get some right hand work in with this. Again, this is a great little exercise activating every finger. And it's something that after a little while of practicing that you can just do without even thinking about it. Try to be cognizant of the notes that you're playing, okay? Don't make it just a hand movement. Make sure that you're recognizing each note that you're pushing down. I also recommend saying the notes out loud as you go. So all together, I'll do it right nice and slow. is going to be the exact same way on the low E string, okay, except obviously the notes are going to be lower. So here it is on the low E string.
about to squeak again, try not to obsess about it. It's something that takes practice and a light touch. You can hear that even I'm squeaking. Um, it's something that at a certain point can't be avoided, but we just try to lessen the amount that we do it as best we can. Okay, so moving on, like I said, I wanted to just review for today, so I wanted to play for you again a few tunes, um, not all the tunes, but just a few tunes um, that you know I think are, are will be good for you to really concentrate on, uh, the ones that you would probably get the most out of. Uh, one of the first ones is that study number one that we had in the very first class. Um, it's the one where you are playing a, a, a melody note and then droning on a uh, open G string. So I'll play that. Um, at a slow tempo first and then I will speed it up for you. You probably heard me play a wrong note in there. It's kind of hard. I'm doing a couple things at once, checking the angle on the camera and trying to look at the music at the same time. So try to figure out which note I missed. Uh, here it is a little faster. Okay, I don't recommend trying it that fast just yet, but I wanted to give you an example of what it sounds like at a pretty decent clip. Um, it's really almost a virtuosic kind of kind of sounding once you can get it moving at a decent tempo. Uh, however, you always want to try it slow and build your speed up. All right, um, no need to try and play it that fast. Okay, then moving right along, the next tune I think would be great for everyone to, to concentrate on is uh, "Love Me Tender." Okay, it's just a great standard song that, that uh, uh, everyone lo knows and loves. Um, it's got a, real, a bunch of really good basic chords in it, um, and it, it involves the use of the fourth finger on that F sharp. Remember, use your fourth finger for the F sharp. Um, don't neglect using the fourth finger. Any chance you get to use it, use it. Um, if it, you don't get it as strong as the other fingers, it's only going to hold the other fingers back and just draw you down altogether. All right, so here's Love Me Tender. And I'll play through the chord progression once, just so if you want to try and play along with it, I'll do it about the same speed, maybe a little slower, just in quarter notes. One, two, three, four.
And lastly, for the A string, a good song to concentrate on because you can use it, especially around Christmas time, is Green Sleeves. Okay, remember this is in 3-4 time, all right? Try not to, to put that extra beat in like so many uh, beginners like to try to do. We only have three beats per measure. Um, I will play the melody followed by the chord progression. One, two, three. Core progression. One, two, three. There you go. Notice that I was accenting the first beat of every measure. In 3-4 time, um, the first beat is the most important. That's the one that should get the most emphasis. The last two, not so much. Um, when we play in 4-4 time, our emphasis usually falls on the first beat and the third beat. Okay, so just try and keep that in your in your mind while you play through the chords. Um, it helps to keep the pulse going and, and, and tempo. Um, so that's all about what I want to cover for today. Um, again, just a lot to review um, today, uh, only the chromatic scales um, uh, for new material. Uh, we'll also talk about the chords tonight. Uh, remember C minor and an F chord. Uh, the C minor chord looks like this. All right, um, it's hard to see, but I have my first finger on E flat, open G, and your second finger plays the C. That's the way it looks with one and two. Two and three would look like this. So I have my second finger on E flat, my third finger's going on the C on the first fret. All right. Green sleeves also includes the F chord. So remember you have two ways, two options of doing that. Here's what it looks like with just your fingertip. You have third finger F, second finger A, first finger holds down the first two strings. All right. And the other way of doing it is to use the joint of your finger closest to your palm. That way it's a little bit stronger and it kind of looks like that. F chord. Okay? So, hope everyone has a good week. I'll see you tonight.